Good morning, everybody. Thank God for another day. Among the land of the living, God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank God for the plan of salvation. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Uh, our sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus. Nothing else can wash away your sins, but it's all about the blood of Jesus and the finished work at the cross. Um, you know, God made a way for us to escape that death sentence that we have placed upon us as being sinners. Amen. But God is good. You know, he's worthy to be praised. Thank God for the word. Um, the, God has told us things that are yet to happen in the future. And he's 100% accurate. 30% of the Bible is prophecy. I believe 25 to 30%. And he's batting a thousand. He, we serve a God that tells us what's going to happen before it happens so we can believe. If you have a book, amen, that says things are going to happen, it tells you the future of what will happen. And then it happens. Things happen that were prophesied, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years ago. And you see these things taking place. Look, the Bible tells us what's going to happen at the end of times. And we're, we're almost there. He gives us signs. And we can see those things, the signs. We see those things happening. Um, things are lining up exactly like the Bible says they would. So, you know, God is good. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty, mighty God. The one and true God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I just thank God, you know, for... for being able to have 100% confidence in the God we serve and to know, you know, know, we're, know where we're going. I want to talk a little bit today briefly. It's going to be short, but look, we, we are going to live forever. And that's the bottom line. We're going to live forever. This is not our home. This temporary world we live in this is not our etern eternal home. Um, we need to understand that and we need to plan and invest in our eternal destination, our eternal future. Uh, we're either going to live forever with God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all the saints of God. And it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be beautiful. You can't even imagine how how good it's going to be, um, or we're going to live forever in a place that we don't want to go, and that's the lake of fire, eternal wrath. We do not want to go there, but God made it very easy. You know, he, he made it so easy for us to avoid that death sentence and gain the gift of eternal life. And so, you know, it's all about the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Because of what he did, we can have eternal life. We can escape that death sentence. And it's all about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And our souls have been bought with a price. And that is the blood of Jesus. Amen. There's one sacrifice, one offering. There's, there's only one payment. That will be accepted on judgment day before God the Father. And that's the blood of his son Jesus. And so do you have the blood upon your life? Is the blood of Jesus covering your sins? Amen. Have you, are you going to be able to put, out, put on that, that robe of salvation? That white robe of salvation? Amen. That white robe in chapter 19 of, of uh, Revelations represents... The righteousness of the saints. Well, the Bible says there's none good. No, not one. There's no righteous. You read chapter 3 of Romans, it says there's none righteous. No, not one. So how can that be? Well, the scripture teaches that we're justified by faith. We're made righteous by faith in Jesus Christ. So is your faith in Jesus? The scripture says the just, the righteous, shall live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus Faith in the finished work at the cross. Faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Savior of the world. We're all sinners in need of a Savior. We've all fallen short. 
and we're sinners and the wages of sin is death we've earned etern or we've earned eternal capital punishment eternal death the death sentence lake of fire but and that's what we deserve. But God is rich in mercy, and he made a way. He provided a way out. He sent his son into the world to die for the sins of all mankind. And through Jesus, through our Lord and Savior, we can be saved and avoid that death sentence and gain eternal life because Jesus paid our sin debt in full. So we have a choice to make. We can either choose eternal life or we can choose to serve that death sentence. You can either reject the gift that's being offered to you by our, our Lord and Savior. You can reject that gift and serve that death sentence, or you can receive the gift, accept it, and have eternal life. And that's all through repenting to God, putting your faith and trust in Jesus and the finished work of the cross. And so I wanna read a couple scriptures today. It's so important to invest in your eternal um, future, where you're gonna live eternally. And the scripture says here, just a couple passages, chapter 6 and 19 of Matthew. I love this passage. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Where is your heart? Are you seeking heavenly treasures in heaven? Are you seeking God? Are you seeking, are you um, trusting in the Messiah? Are you doing things in your life that are preparing you for your eternal future? Our hope is in Jesus. Our, um, you know, our goal, the prize that we seek after is eternal life. So are you focused on the prize? Paul said, I press towards the mark for the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And that is our eternal prize, our eternal reward is to... Uh, escape that death sentence, escape the lake of fire, and enter into eternal life. I want to hear my Lord and Savior say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And we don't want, we don't want the Lord to say, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. We want him to say, well done, thy, thy good and faithful servant. Oh, all right, so three and one of Colossians. I want to read this here. It kind of ties in together with that. If we're in Christ, if we're born again believers, um, we need to seek God and we need to, we should be seeking heavenly things. Amen. We should be, um, you know, working on our, um, looking to the future. For example, I know that heaven is my eternal uh, goal. I want to make it in. I want to make it to heaven. So I'm doing all I can to, um, you know, I'm striving. Uh, you want to grow, grow spiritually, put on your spiritual armor. And the scripture teaches us that we can grow by reading our word. Two and two of first Peter says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Amen. So through prayer, um, you know, praying and and fasting and and you know reading your bible studying the word of god walking in the spirit being full of the holy spirit the scripture says in 5 and 18 of uh first Thess or ephesians be not drunk with wine but be filled with the spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and spiritual hymns and making melody in your heart and always giving thanks unto the lord Amen. Be thankful. Thank God every day for what he's He's done for you. Your life, your health, your strength, the, your breath. Um, he gives you your breath and he can take it away anytime. We don't know when we're going to take our last breath. So we need to be thankful and just stay focused on Jesus. Uh, magnify the name of Jesus. You know, meditate upon him. Meditate upon the Lord. And you, you've got to keep your focus on 
Jesus. When you do that, that allows the Holy Spirit to work on the inside and to help you grow. And he'll clean you up and he'll you'll become more like Christ every day when you're walking in the Spirit. And that only comes through keeping your focus on Jesus and striving to do the things of the Lord. The scripture says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Okay, one more scripture. I want to read Colossians 3 and 1. It says, if any man, or if ye then be risen with Christ. 3 and 1 of Colossians says, if you then be risen with Christ. See, if you're born again and you're in Christ, then you're risen with Christ. You, you, if you're in Christ, see, that comes at the born again experience when you come to saving faith. 12 and 13 of 1 Corinthians says, uh, for by one spirit have we all been baptized into the body of Christ. And at that moment, at the born again experience, when you repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus, you're born again. God gives you his Holy Spirit to come and dwell on the inside. He comes to take up residence on the inside. That's the seal of your salvation. And the Holy Spirit, he, amen, he's, he's a member of the, of the Trinity, of the Godhead. He comes in on the inside and he lives on the inside of all the born again believers. Amen. And what, you know, Holy Spirit, his job is to lead you and guide you and to teach you and to comfort you and um to just to be there to help he's a helper to help you live this life amen and you now you know when you're born again you have god nature you have a desire to seek god you god regenes you he regenerates you amen you're born from on high and you now have a new desire to seek him and to please him and the holy spirit is there to help you do that amen and three and one of colossians says if ye then be risen with christ Seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on the earth. Amen. The scripture says in, uh, I believe it's 1 Timothy 2 and 15, possibly it says, Love not the world. Let me see if I can find that really fast. It says, Love not the world neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is, oh, that's in, I'm sorry, that's in 1 John. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away, but he that loves the Lord endures forever. I believe it says something to that extent. Let me find it really fast. Love not the world. We don't want to love this world. This world, there's nothing good in the world. It's the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And God doesn't like any of that. Amen. So we want to make sure we're seeking. Um, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things for which are above. You know, do the things that are going to invest in your eternal state. Amen. Our goal is to reach heaven, and we want to be doing the work of God. We want to do all we can to please him, be obedient to his word, um, and understand, you know, this is a growing process. Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus. Understand that it's a growing process. We're going to make mistakes along the way, and when you do make a mistake, Ask the Lord to forgive you. Don't let the devil beat you up because he'll try to beat you up and, and make you feel like you're not saved. And he's just, he's a thief. He's a robber. He's a stealer. And he's a murderer. And he doesn't care nothing about us. His goal is to take as many people with him to the lake of fire. He's got a reserve seat and he's trying to take everybody with him. So you've got to say, Lucia, you devil, I'm saved by the blood. And I'm going to get up and keep fighting. And just sock it to them real good. Amen. Go to praying. Go to reading scripture. You know, talking about the goodness of Jesus. And he'll flee. He don't want to hear about Jesus. He'll flee. Amen. Uh, 1 John 
2.15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. So we want to make sure we're seeking God. Um, we're seeking heavenly things, um, not worldly things. We came into this world uh, naked, and we're going to leave the same way. Um, we're not taking nothing with us. So it's important to understand that we want to seek God. Time is getting short. We see things going on, and we know that the end times is upon us, and Jesus is coming again. And we want to be prepared. There's things that we have to that are going to happen still. And we want to be prepared to, to endure until the end. Let's put on our spiritual armor, um, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, and the breastplate of righteousness, having your loins girt about with truth, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And everything, the, all the armor of God, is based on your faith and trust in Jesus. It all points to Jesus. Every, every bit of armor that you put on spiritually it all points to Jesus, trusting in Jesus, putting your hope in Jesus. Why? Because he's the savior of the world. We've been bought with the price, with his blood. He paid a ransom for us so we could be set free. Our chains that had us bound in sin, in darkness, Satan had us bound. But Jesus came and he broke those chains off. Amen. When you're born again and you put your faith and trust in Jesus, those chains are broken off and you're in Christ at that moment and you're saved and on your way to heaven. So don't let that devil trick you. Um, give him a black eye, you know, kick him in the face, stomp on him and say, Lucy, are you devil? I'm saved by the blood. And keep your faith and trust in Jesus for everything you do. Our trust is in the Lord. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So trust in Jesus. Trust in God. Uh, put him first and seek him while he may be found. Don't wait till tomorrow. Uh, get right with God. Give your life to Jesus. Surrender to Christ because we have a heaven to gain and a hell to escape. So stay encouraged, fight the good fight of faith, keep fighting until the very end, and let's win that prize. Amen. That prize is eternal life. Amen. I press toward the mark for the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I press for that prize. Amen. And that prize is eternal life. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Stay encouraged and keep fighting the good fight of faith. And in the end, we're going we're gonna to serve in eternity. We're going to inherit that gift of eternal life. And it's just going to be a glorious day. And what a wonderful day it's going to be. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And just love God with all your heart. Love your neighbors yourself. And let your light shine before men. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day.